Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, you are getting a thrift to treasure. So all things fall today. I am transforming some recent picks um, from my thrift hauls and getting them ready for Cranberry Fest. So I hope you enjoy today's video. For project one, I recently thrifted this pumpkin and it was st sitting in my stash for a bit because I honestly didn't know what I wanted to do with it until I saw Fall Tartan, the recent uh, Roy Cycle decoupage paper that was released. It actually comes with that burnt orange on one side and like a bluish on the other. So you can definitely do multiple projects with this. This is the chunk that I had left over. So it fit perfectly on the front. So I'm applying one even coat of a white swan to the front. And I'm doing that because anytime I use the decoupage paper, I typically want the those colors to really pop. So I'm letting this dry and then we're going to come back and apply the paper. Now the pumpkin is dry. I am placing the paper. I want to make sure that all of the pumpkin is covered and that my stripes are perfect. I start with what I call a starter strip. So I apply an even coat of liquid patina, which is my favorite uh, decoupage medium when I work with recycled papers. And all the products that I'm using in today's video, you can find on my website which is www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. But once I apply that first starter strip of the liquid patina down, I then smooth down the paper and work out all the wrinkles. And this really gives me control of my paper. Uh, it helps alleviate a lot of the wrinkles. And then I can start working my way up and I apply more liquid patina, lay down the paper, Paper, smooth those wrinkles out, get the paper just laid perfect, and then continue on up over my entire pumpkin. Now that it's completely dry, I am using a piece of sandpaper and in a downward motion, I'm going around the entire perimeter of the pumpkin and removing the excess. After I completely do that, then I start on the inside. And in the past, um, I have heard recommendations of getting a nail file. After today's project, guys, I am definitely getting some nail files because they would have worked perfectly uh, to do the mouth and the eyes and nose of the pumpkin. So another item that I have to add to my arsenal of supplies. For project two, this was inspired by my good friend Kristen over at Simply Joy Creations by Kristen. If you haven't yet, head on over to her Facebook page and give her some love over there. She has so much inspiration that she posts daily. Uh, she's amazing at mixed media and she found these leaves last year and uh, put, brought them to a couple shows and they sold out right away. So I am going to show you her inspiration or how she flipped these and then I'm going to show you my twist on it. First and foremost, I am going to break out some of my favorite fall colors. We're starting with the Gypsy Green, and I ended up, uh, actually my mother was at Hobby Lobby, that's where she found these, and I had been looking for them for a while, and my Hobby Lobby had not had them. My mom was there. I said, grab them all, and she ended up getting 30 of these. So what I did is I divided 
divided them into piles of six and I painted six of them gypsy green, six of them summer crush, six faded burlap, and then six of them uh, white swan, and then six more farm fresh. Here they all are, completely painted and are drying. And then from here, we're going to continue on with the project. But aren't these just spectacular? We're going to start with my twist on the project. So I'm taking the ones that have the white swan. Here is the fall tartan that I spoke about on the previous project. So you can see it has this burnt orange on one side and then a really pretty blue on the other. I am just using the uh, burnt orange in today's project, setting aside the other half for a future project. I am flipping it over and I am going to lay out how I want to cut out each of these. I want to make sure there's a little bit of an overlap on the each of the leaves and basically I still end up with a big chunk of paper left over after I cut out each um, chunk and that is what I used on that previous project. So just like I always do, I use a liquid patina and basically I flip the leaf over. I make sure that it has full coverage. I do the starter strip and then I work my way down. It really is that easy and I am going to do that on all six leaves. I'm going to then set this piece of the project aside let it dry very thoroughly that is the key to when you do the um, sanding afterwards to get rid of the excess paper you want to make sure that the project is dry otherwise it will go awry paper will start tearing so I just want to let you guys know definitely make sure your paper is dry then I took out Halloween Masterboard. At first, I was going to just continue on with Kristen's inspiration, but I wanted to add a bit of Halloween to my Cranberry Fest booth, and I had a bunch of the Halloween Masterboard paper left over from a previous video. I thought, what a perfect opportunity to use it in today's video. So what I am doing is basically going to lay out where I think there's cool pieces of the paper that will show up on here and I am going to place all the leaves on that paper and then start cutting out. Now it's time to decoupage and again I line it up make sure that the whole entire leaf is covered but that I have some really cool images on each one and any of like the excess little pieces of paper I sometimes will even take those uh rip those around little chunks and add them as well. Uh, you can definitely layer the decoupage paper. A recommendation is either to use a wet paintbrush and go around the image and then tear or just tear towards you around it. It is uh, easier to blend decoupage paper when it's torn around the edges versus a straight cut. While well, all those are drying, now we're going to go on to Kristen's inspiration. And I also love Le Courier and Kindest Regards. They are by far two of my favorite stamps. Uh, so what we're going to do on three of them is we are going to take the Le Courier, ink it up with the IOD Permanent Black Ink, and line it up and I definitely want to get a chunk of the Le Courier on here and I basically look to see where the best placement is, lay it down, and then take my hand and just rub it very gently over the entire stamp to really ensure that I get a nice, crisp, clean image. I set that aside and then I continue on with that Le Courier and do the other two and then we're going to take Kindest Regards and do the rest. 
If you guys haven't yet found the envelopes, the stamp envelopes, they are available on my website. And honestly, guys, these envelopes from IOD have gotten me so organized with my stamps. So I just wanted to point that out. I store all my stamps in those. But again, I am just doing the exact same thing with the IOD Kindest Regards stamp, uh, just inking it up, laying it down, and rubbing. And this is such an easy flip uh, and transformation. And think of all the possibilities that you can do with either of these stamps. Now I am taking Big Top from DIY and I am going to seal all the stamps uh, once the ink is dry. The ink is permanent, so it will not come off, but you definitely want to make sure your ink is dry before you seal it. Uh, but the DIY paint can be reactivated with water, so I always seal all of my DIY paint. I'm just going to go through, seal all of these, let them dry, and then this project or this portion of the project will be finished. On to the fall tartan. I'm grabbing my sandpaper again and grabbing one of the leaves and just in a downward motion going around the outside perimeter and removing the excess. And really guys, that's how easy this is and it really transforms these leaves completely. I'm doing the exact same thing with the Halloween Masterboard, and I love the look of these two. It just adds so much whimsy to each of these leaves, and what perfect shelf sitters to have these sitting about uh, for your fall or Halloween display. I wanted to toss this portion of the project in here as well. I do want to have something to house these at Cranberry Fest. And I had this old wooden um, kind of like a dough bowl. I didn't like the color. I am painting it faded burlap. I'm going to apply two even coats of faded burlap to the entire piece, let it dry, go back i wet distress the edges and then seal it and then i am going to have a chunk of these displayed in there plus have them sitting about my entire booth For project three, I thrifted this pumpkin. It had really good bones. I did not like the color. It had these leaves attached to the top. I removed the leaves. I'm going to reuse it a little bit differently in this project. I am taking Little Black Dress and I am going to apply one even coat of Little Black Dress to the entire piece. DIY paint is heavily pigmented, so the darker colors have amazing coverage with just one coat. Uh, no need to apply to. I'm not going to wet distress it or anything like that. I am just going to apply one even coat, let it dry, and then come back and we are going to transform these leaves. I'm pulling out Gypsy Green and I am going to apply one even coat to the leaves on both sides. Let those dry. Then I'm going to come back. I'm going to seal those with Big Top and then they're going to be ready to be re-added to the project. I didn't like the color of the stem, so I painted it prairie gray, and I think it will be the perfect color for this project. 
I am using painterly florals and I had used this on a previous project so I had pieces left over like this sunflower. My vision here is I'm going to take some of the sunflower leaves and put them around the top and then put the sunflower on the front and then add some leaves there. I just think it will bring this whole project together and then I can use up some of these transfers that I started using. Um, I know that I'm sure I'm sure you guys have transfer pieces lying around so I am trying to use up all of mine and this was the perfect project for this. I had a chunk of leaves left over so I applied the leaves first. After that then I'm going to apply the sunflower. When applying the sunflower, I start on one side and I work my way over because there's a lot of grooves in this pumpkin and it takes a little bit, but I do get it on there and I burnish the entire transfer on the piece. I add an extra leaf and it is set. Now it's time to seal it. Anytime you do use a transfer, you do want to seal your project. So there's two reasons why I'm sealing it is because I'm using D. DIY paint and the transfer and then this project will be complete. For project four, I grabbed this basket on a recent thrift haul, and this project is gonna be a real easy flip. I am using Summer Crush from DIY Paint. I'm going to apply just a nice even coat over the entire piece let it dry. I am going to seal it. I am always looking for ways to add pops of color to my displays and uh, use different pieces to house different items. So I can put pumpkins in here. I can put some of the leaves possibly in here. So I love using wicker baskets um, or baskets throughout my display and again add pops of color. So this is a really quick and easy way to do that. I also want to decorate this basket up a bit. So I'm going to show you how I do that next. I had a tag and a little bit of that fall tartan paper left over. So I decoupage the paper on the tag. And then I had some of this transfer left over as well. And this is called Millet's Pages. And I'm going to use just a little chunk of the transfer and put it on the front. I think it will just tie this in perfectly to the whole fall theme. I really wanted to include a pumpkin on here, but unfortunately the pumpkins were a bit big. Then I'm going to just take a piece of twine and attach it to the edge. I'm also going to add a little bit of the black and white buffalo check to this piece. And then if you notice, I also took just a little bit of that little black dress and distressed that handle with it. I just kind of just brushed it, almost like dry brushed it over the handle just to tie that all together. And it completely transformed just a very basic basket. For our fifth and final project, this one guys is going to be super simple. 
I love collecting vintage books and I like stacking them in either light colors or, you know, like red, white, and blue. And I have a ton of ribbon. As you guys, if you're following me on my live, you see my ribbon hanging on my back of my door. I'm just going to take a chunk of ribbon. I'm going to wrap the ribbon around it and it's going to be a book stack. I grab these at the thrift store anytime I can, these old books. And so this is a really easy and simple way to bind them together. You can also use twine. I just thought this ribbon was perfect with the colors. And there you have it. But I'm not finished. Uh, you can just simply do this. But I want to add a tag. So I have a bunch of little wood tags. And I am just going to um, write on there with a fine tip Sharpie. Happy harvest. And then I am going to just outline it a little bit. It, attach the tag and this project is complete. So very simple way to upcycle and add a book stack to your booth or your vignette in your home. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and found some fall inspiration within it. I have been diligently prepping for Cranberry Fest, pulling items from my stash, showcasing them on my lives uh, so you guys can help me flip them live or watch my videos. And I am juggling a ton of balls right now and I feel like one of them is going to be coming crashing down. I definitely want to stay on task and provide you guys with videos and really show you everything that goes involved or goes into and is involved in prepping for a big show like this. So I try to bring you guys along for that. Uh, I'm definitely going to be doing some more thrift flips uh, in the future uh, because there is a lot to get ready for. So today you did get a few thrift flips, but I also took items or an item. I bought those leaves recently and was totally inspired from my friend Kristen. Uh, who brought them to a couple shows and they went over extremely well. So I thought, why not incorporate them into Cranberry Fest? So I, again, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification. So every Monday and Friday when I upload a video, you'll be notified. And if you like today's video, give me a thumbs up and let me know what you thought in the comments below. All right, well, you guys have yourselves a great weekend. I am in Northern Wisconsin by the time this video gets released. I am fishing a muskie tournament. It is something that I have done for like the past five years. And uh, I am sure I'm gonna be coming back on Monday feeling extremely exhausted, but rip roaring to go. So you guys take care and have a great weekend and we'll see you Monday. Bye.